Hello everyone, hello Jack Keith here and welcome to a different sort of video from the norm like the hot lap videos. What we're going to do, we're going to go on the Macau Grand Prix circuit and test three very special highly successful race cars from the 90s. The Audi V8 DTM, BMW M3 Sport Evolution and the Mercedes 190e Evo. Because these three cars, to me personally, have a huge significance on my life and what I love from motorsports and where my passion of it comes from because some of these cars were not even some of my earliest memories but even looking back today they're still so damn good so we're going to go on to Macau start with the Audi first we're going to look at not just speed and our lap time but just fun as well so the Audi being four wheel drive on Macau theoretically it should be good might even be the quickest of these three, we'll see. But I think it'll be a very good test. So let's go on to Macau and test these cars to their very limits. Right, here we go. First time driving this thing, Frank Beeler's Audi V8 Quattro. The car he won the 1991 DTM Championship with. In 1992, it was not as competitive. Nothing about his driving, just the car overall, because the competition just simply caught up and just got better. Oh, oh I can feel the understeer, but this car, 1300 kilos, quite heavy, and I can certainly feel it. Got the force feedback sitting quite high. And this being a very, very bumpy track, it's like driving over a teenager's face. Oh. I mean, hopefully the four-wheel drive is going to constant. It's just going to constantly just give me such, such power out the corners. I mean, oh. The other thing looking to specs up about this car, no ABS. I get the thing I could hamper it. Oh. I mean, still, for what it is, it's not bad. It's not bad whatsoever. It's just once you come out of the corners, it's got 400, 400, some 460 horsepower. It just rockets out of them. Oh. I can definitely see why this car was as competitive in 92. Now it comes to the dreaded hairpin. Oof. Also, the car is quite long, and uh, the car itself is also about over 300 kilos heavier than its competitors. So, the BMW and the Mercedes, just under a thousand kilos. That is such a difference. We're going to give this a go for a few laps. See what we can get out of it. Also with each car, I'm only going to do a few laps. Nothing too crazy. Like I said, it's just going to be an experience of fun and not absolute ultimate pace, but a pretty good ballpark area, you could say. This is what the car's pace is. Oh, tenth up myself, and oh, <laughs> you're on the edge of disaster every corner around Macau, and I absolutely love it. If this is going to be, I mean, this is fun driving this car. I'm not going to lie, it is fun. If this is fun in this, imagine what it's going to be like in the BMW and the Mercedes with how much lighter they are. I mean, of course, they have less power. They're actually losing about between 80 and 90 horsepower to this. But just think how much faster around these corners those cars will be. Oh, ow. That was a big knock on the wall. Oh, 
Oh, power, come on. <laughs> oh, I love Macau. I love this track. Loved it ever since the days of Race 07. And it's still just as good today to drive. Getting around that hairpin is an utter... Oh, it's a pain. <laughs> it's an absolute pain. Also, I'm going to preface it with each car. I'm just going to run default setup. Not going to do any flim flam, no adjustments, nothing. Oh, that was better. That was better. And just look at the speed. We're going to touch. We're going to hit about 255k or close to it as we hit the brakes here. Well, oh, I think I braked a bit too early. Yeah, I was down on myself for that sector, the first sector split there. Oh, you can probably feel, like I can feel through the wheel, just the outright power, the four-wheel drive propelling me out of the corners with such ease. Oh, that's, that's not good. Hit that wall there on the inside. <laughs> Can't imagine just how good these cars were to drive back in the day. And also, just the amount of money all the teams were just chucking at the series. It was just insane. Just millions of pounds, or millions of euros, or, you know, just... <laughs> so much cash getting thrown about. Back in the day as well, when every session there'd be new engines put into the cars. So over a two race weekend, there'd be a qualifying engine, a race one engine, a race two engine. Okay. Going to complete our last lap. I'd say it's going to be slightly quicker. There we go. Alright. 129A. I think that's a fairly decent lap time. Bearing in mind as well that on Race 07 about 10 years ago, I remember doing a really, really fast lap with the BMW M3 on there. Uh, at the time, current BMW M3. And that was only a few seconds quicker than that. Not much. So this definitely still holds out. While it's not so brilliant in the corners, the power, oh, <laughs> you could see it as well, you could just see how the car and the speed, just how much the car just goes. So, we're going to get out of this thing, get out of Frank Beater's prized lovely car, and I think we're going to get into Johnny Chicotto's BMW M3. So, let's do that. Here we are, driving Johnny Chicotto's BMW M3 from 1992 Championship. Oof. While the car itself wasn't as much of a success as the Mercedes in that season, still won a boatload of races. Chicotto himself won a few. Roberto Ravaglia, Steve Soper, Jochen Winkelhock. Just an amazing roster of drivers. And here we go. This car with this ABS, as opposed to the Audi, which didn't have it. This is where the car will make up the difference. slowly there. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, that was nice. Oh, a bit too early. It's just so hard judging the limit. You're always so close to the walls here. Oh, bit too close. Oh. -ho. I'll be surprised if this car is slower than the Audi by the time we finish our few laps in this thing. I get that the car is not as powerful in a straight line, but... Or, it's got a much better turning circle though. It handled the hairpin so much better than the Audi. This very car though, the genesis of BMW's enormous success in touring car racing. Oh, that is way slower than the Audi. That's not right. <laughs> Going through Mandarin there. That was quick. Gained a lot of time back on myself in the first sector. Come on. I need to gain a few seconds, so. nice just the way the car slid through that corner only weighs 970 kilograms so light doesn't weigh too much more than the Formula One car at the time Kissed it. Oh, this is so much fun, this car around here. All we need now is race room to release super touring cars. <laughs> oh, around there, that was lovely. Ooh, 2.4 up on myself. Still not sure it's going to be as quick as the Audi. Hmm, that wasn't brilliant. Oh, not far off the Audi whatsoever. Very close. It's only a tenth off. Oh, don't hit the wall, don't hit the wall. Oof. Ah, oh, cost myself some time. So come on, let's see what this go kart with bodywork can uh, see if we can extract more out of it in the middle portion of the lap. Oh. oh, this track is a workout as well. No, no. Brush the wall there. Like super late. 
Mr. Apex but carried still some good speed. That corner's way better than last two laps. It's just inches from the wall every corner. God, I wish I could drive this circuit for real. bit of time myself mill sector mm. oh. <laughs> oh that's cruel a bit sideways ah uh, ultimately it's not gonna be quicker right now I think given a few more laps it would be. I definitely didn't drive as good on some corners as on that sec on my quickest lap there than I did on my last lap. But I still think this and the Audi are very similar on pace. They're very even. One certainly has got its cons and pros, and the other one's got its cons and pros as well, so let's hop into Bernd Schneider's legendary Mercedes 190E and see what that does as well. And here we are, driving Bernd Schneider's legendary Mercedes 190E. While he didn't win the championship in 92, the car pretty much took the bulk of the victories, or the most in that season. Klaus Ludwig winning the championship in the Mercedes, Kurt Team in the Mercedes in second, and Bernd Schneider third place. Certainly was the class of the field. Oh, similar specs to the BMW, very similar weight, same power output. ABS brakes as well, but aesthetically and aerodynamically, oh, that was not good. <laughs> the Mercedes had everyone else beat, the car just simply looked so much faster. So if this isn't the quickest car around here, I'll be very surprised. Then you had around seven drivers racing the Mercedes throughout the season, but they were all world class drivers. Probably the hardest of the three to drive in the twisty sections. But I reckon it'll be one of them cars where it will feel the most rewarding when you get it right. Let's see what's like at the hairpin here. Hmm, not brilliant. Let's see what's like on the next lap, but it's not as good as the BMW. Going around that corner. first lap is still not going to be too bad. Certainly better than my first lap in the BMW. This is just such a great trip down memory lane for me driving this thing. Apart from that, hitting the wall, that's not a good thing. Ugh. So close from danger, every corner. So close to that wall.
<laughs> Line up the rears nearly every corner. Oh, a bit too fast there. Managed to control it. That was better than last time. That was better. Seven tens up on ourselves. Not quite enough at the moment. Maybe I just drove that Audi much better than the other two cars so far. Start our last lap. Yeah, we gained some time back in that last sector, but still hmm, a second off the Audi right now. Come on, let's gain all that time back and more. Ah! <sighs> Hitting the wall is. Ah! Couldn't put a cigarette paper between the gap between the car and the wall there at times. Oh my word. Gain that vital second. No, we're not. We've lost time. My mill sector was not as good as it should have been. I'm not entirely sure if I had hooked that lap up if this car would beat the Audi. I do not know. And there we go, 230.6. Mm, not brilliant. Over three laps, I didn't drive it as good as I should have done. But I think out of the three, if I had to pick one car, if I had three car keys in front of me, one for each car, I'd have to pick the BMW. It's my favourite looking car, it's the most fun to drive. And it's to me, it's like a go car with, with bodywork. It's that, that good. So. With that, I shall leave it up to you guys as to what would you people prefer? What would you prefer out of these three cars? Whether it either just be for speed or outright fun, whether you've just been watching on TV or tried them on race room, let me know in the comments down below. So, everyone, thank you very much if you've been watching the whole way through, and take care, everyone.